Hello there. Today I'll be talking about unusual diatonic chords in minor keys, um, which is a kind of pan-diatonicism. Now, the purpose of this is fairly simple. It's to provide insight into the nature of diatonic minor chords that are infrequently used. The harmonic minor and the melodic minor are analyzed in this study. So the 6 and 7 are normally flattened or raised accordingly to create certain diatonic functions. In other words, in the Aeolian key, the 7th is only raised in the 5 chord so that the raised 7th leads to 1 more effectively. It's not raised in the 3. But to discover diatonic chords that are unusual, I am going to be ignoring these customary alterations and will simply always use the raised 7th in harmonic minor not just in the 5 and 6 diminished, and always used the raised 6th and 7th in melodic minor to discover those sorts of diatonic chords instead. Now, each of the slides after I talk about the diatonic chords will explain a certain instance of peculiarity that comes from these different kinds of diatonic chords. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the diatonic 7th chords themselves. I'm going to say them, and then I'm going to play them all for you. In the harmonic minor, we have the 1 minor major 7, and everything I do will be in C minor for the purposes of simplicity. So 1 minor major 7. The 2 half diminished 7. The 3 augmented major 7. The 4 minor 7 the 5-7, the 6 major 7, and the 7 fully diminished 7. So those are the diatonic chords that result from only the 7th being raised, and from the 7th always being raised when it appears, um, not just in the 5 and 7. Okay, so this is the melodic minor. One minor major seven. Two minor seven. Three augmented major seven. Four seven. Five seven. Six half diminished seven. And seven half diminished seven. And then at the bottom are the chords that normally have a raised seventh with a flat seven instead. So if we're in this key, it would be the minor five minor seven. So five minor seven. Which sounds modal. And then you also have the flat seven major seven. which can certainly be equated to another diatonic key. Alrighty, so let's go over the three augmented first. That's the first peculiarity we need to discuss. The augmented chord can act and have many functions at once. So it can either function as a tonic or dominant. It works as a tonic in the one minor major seven or the six. You see, because the six can have a upper tertian sonority that is equal to a sharp 9. Or it acts as a tonic in the 1 minor major 7. And the 7 sort of wants to go to 1, but can also stay there by itself as a non-chord tone and serve to change the color of the chord. Now it can also function as a dominant, because it is enharmonic to the 5 augmented. But the 5 augmented uh, has a sharp 5 that doesn't really resolve up it stays enharmonic to the flat 6. So often, the 3 augmented is simply written as a 5 augmented, but with the notes of the 3 augmented present. Note that the 5 augmented, really written like the 3, and the 1 minor major 7 share three common tones, which are those of the 3 augmented itself. And so the three augmented can act as either a dominant or a tonic. 
The next peculiarity we're going to talk about is the six. Now, note that when I notate the minor six here, I don't mean the raised sixth um, that normally functions in the Ionian key. This is a six that's constructed from the flat six, the seven, and the three. Now, the flat six and the seven are technically something else. Um, they are technically an augmented second, but I choose to sort of label it a third so that this chord can be written more easily. So if we're in C minor, this minor six chord is like this. It's A flat minor, but really it's an A flat fifth with um, an added seventh in that key. So technically it does not spell a minor chord but it is enharmonic to a minor chord that begins on the flatted sixth. And now this chord will often act as a dominant because the seventh will go up to one, or it can act as a gateway into sort of another tonality. Although a lot of chords that are diatonic don't really lead towards the minor six itself. So um, the way I like to think about this chord being a dominant is in the imperial march. Um, Let's see, which in C minor goes... That's the one chord. And then this is that enharmonic six sonority that I mentioned. Um, the flat six in this chord goes down to five. And then the uh, seven in this chord goes up to one. So that's sort of how that voicing works. Um, mainly that chord acts as something that's enharmonic to a minor chord, but really is used as a dominant in that minor key. The other peculiar kind of six chord is the six sharp nine, because both of the thirds in the six chord are diatonic in the harmonic minor, um, and actually, no, only the harmonic minor, because the flat six is diatonic in the harmonic minor, but not in the melodic minor ascending, which is the only one we are worrying about. So the 6 sharp 9 sounds like this. Constructed from flat 6, 1, 3, 5, 7. Usually it's used as a tonic following 5 or predominant before 1, 6, 4, 5. And that would sound like this. So yeah, you can use the 6 sharp 9 as a predominant, or you can actually use it as the tonic, because, I mean, it has the 3 augmented in it, and you know how the 6 acts as a tonic in a deceptive progression. You can have 1, 5, 6, and then that's a deceptive progression. The sharp 9 has the same function as that tonic that functions in the deceptive progression. So 1, Because the sonority has the augmented three in it, its flexibility, it's emphasized, it can sometimes be a dominant, but it's usually a tonic or predominant. And the diminished chord varieties are also strange because you get a lot more um, possibilities for types of diminished chords. Um, the minors um, will sort of generate different ones because of how the sixth and seventh are raised. Um, here are all the different possibilities of diminished seventh chords that can exist. If we're in this key, one, the two have diminished seven, the six have diminished seven, the seven have diminished, and the seven fully diminished. So yeah, um, the diminished chords can either be used as predominance or dominance. Half diminished seven sounds like the upper part of a ninth. So this is especially true with the six half diminished seven and the seven half diminished seven, which relate to the four nine and the five nine, respectively. So yeah, um, that is how you can use those. Using a ninth also creates more variety, and the third will go in the bass, acting like a sixth with an added seventh. So for example, if I had um, the seven fully diminished seventh, but I added the one in it, quality, 
a diminished sixth chord, so to speak, although that's not really commonly used. It's a very interesting quality of chord that results from these diatonic chords specifically. So yeah, using it as a non-chord tone. Multiple dominant sevenths are also important to think about because that occurs in the ascending melodic minor. You have the 4-7 and the 5-7. The 4-7, of course, can go to 7, which can go to 1, and other places. And the 5-7, of course, can lead to 1. Um, they lead to their different places, respectively. Um, the dominant sevenths for the relative major can also be used, which is the 7-7. Seven, seven. And that is only diatonic in the uh, in the harmonic minor key because it has the flat six in it. So that would be like one seven seven and then three flat six five one. So you can use that as well. Um, the three augmented, of course, acts equally as a dominant to the three keys um, that it tonicizes. The one the 6, and the sharp 3. The sharp 3, of course, being out of key. Only two are diatonic. The chord serves as a useful pivot to other functions, even within the key, since, of course, as we went over, it can act as a tonic or as a dominant. I can show you how an augmented chord acts like a dominant. Um, it can go to the 1, or it can go to the 6, or it can go to the sharp 3 minor. Because, as you know, if any augmented chord is a dominant, um, it can go three different directions because it's equally spaced within the octave in that way, that it can go three different directions. And, of course, the last category is just large tertiary harmonies. When you're using a full 13th, the bass determines the harmony more than anything else. So harmony that uses all the notes. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to take the five flat six seven and flat three, and I'm just going to use it up here. And then in the bass, I'm going to go between different notes. See how this collection of notes can be found in um, ton you know tonic dominant and predominant. But depending on the bass note, that sounds like a tonic, dominant, you know, tonic maybe again, predominant, dominant, tonic. It all depends on the bass note I'm playing. So really, um, strange chords can simply be made by taking one of these diatonic chords and adding a bass note unrelated to its thirds. So like, um, if I had a, let's say, two, four, six, one in the melodic minor, and I wanted to make a strange sounding chord. Um, if it was not a tertian harmony, what I could do is I could include either five, or I could include flat three. Which sounds very strange. So you can just use the large tertian harmonies to make strange sounding chords. And then a few of the common ones um, I like to use are there in the middle. The five flat nine with a ninth on bottom. It sounds like a diminished chord with a major 7 on top, and that will often go, you know, to 1. It just sounds really interesting uh, as a diminished chord with the 7th on top. And then you also have the 1 minor major 7 with an add flat 6. Um, sounds like a 1 with a more clear uh, major 7. So in other words, the flat 6 is not in the bottom, it's in the chord. So that's another really strange sounding one. And then you have the 4 sharp 11, um, utilizes one minor major 7 in the upper voice and 4 in the low voice. So I just have one minor major 7 chord and then I just play the 4 in the bottom. So yeah, that would be just an example of one of those strange chords at the bottom that's simply made by taking a seventh and then adding something from a tertian harmony, or something unrelated to its thirds. And that is my presentation on unusual diatonic chords in minors and what their capabilities are. So thank you for listening.